directly hand over to Vijay. And just one quick announcement for everyone. We also have the poster session today. So please do visit Gather Town. I think the links have been sent to you. So uh, I hope you enjoy the poster session. So Vijay, you can start our today's session. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, user. So hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Uh, so welcome to the second day uh, of this exciting conference on open quantum dynamics and thermodynamics. So in this session, we have three speakers and our schedule is tight as Juzer mentioned, because we also have just after the talks, uh, the poster session. Uh, so our first speaker for today is Jay Dong No from University of Seoul. Uh, he will be talking about fluctuation dissipation theorem for Hamiltonian eigenstates. So before Jay begins, maybe let me just ask Jay, are you okay if we uh, record this uh, talk? Yeah, that's fine for me. Okay, great. All right, so the stage is yours, Jay. So should I share my screen? Yes, please. Uh, and for the audience, if you uh, have uh, questions that you want to ask, you can raise your hand. And Jay, is it okay if I uh, stop you uh, in between to ask questions? Uh, yeah, anytime. anytime. That, okay, great. And you can also type the questions uh, in the chat box and uh, I can take those questions. Uh, I can ask those questions at the end of the uh, talk. That is also an option. Okay, Jay, so stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me to this workshop. So it really is very hard to be a part of this kind of uh, big event. So I think this is a very nice opportunity to discuss physics. Okay, uh, this is my title and my name is Jerome No uh, in the University of Seoul. And so this work, uh, this talk is based on uh, my recent two publications. One is in PRL last year, and the other one uh, this January. Okay. So uh, this is the outline. So first of all, uh, actually, uh, the, this workshop is about the uh, open quantum system, thermodynamics for quantum system, but uh, my talk is for the isolated quantum systems. So hopefully, um, I hope you enjoy uh, this topic too, okay? So first, uh, let me briefly uh, review the concept of quantum thermalization and eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. This is a basic uh, uh, kind of a paradigm for understanding of thermodynamics of isolated quantum system. And then I move to the main part of my presentation. First, uh, I will explain the fluctuation dissipation theorem for uh, Hamiltonian energy eigenstate. And then I also try to explain some of my recent results for the so-called eigenstate to eigenstate fluctuations. Okay, so what's the, what do you mean by the quantum thermalization? Uh, in this period, um, we have a big uh, advance in experimental techno technology in such a way that we can assimilate the isolate quantum dynamics. Okay, so for example, if you prepare some cold atom system in, in this uh, harmonic uh, confining potential, and then you can observe the the motion of uh, measure the motion of atomic cloud okay, as a function of continuous time. Okay, so actually this is a very uh, famous experiment which shows some. Uh, quantum real quantum many body dynamic real time many body dynamics. So they 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 prepare this cold atom system in this uh, uh, harmonic potential, and they uh, impart some kind some amount of uh, positive momentum to the half of the cloud, and the uh, also the some amount of uh, momentum in the opposite direction to the half of the atomic cloud. Okay, so so they depart in this direction and that direction. So this, in this initial state, the system is out of equilibrium uh, condition. But uh, as time goes on, this atomic cloud just uh, uh, bounce back and forth and they do not uh, return to the thermal equilibrium state. Uh, the, the equilibrium state would be some atomic cloud at the center of uh, this harmonic potential. Okay. So this is some kind of uh, example of uh, quantum many body quantum system that uh, exhibit the non-equilibrium uh, 
dynam dynamics. Okay, this is this system is called as a Newton's cradle of uh, what are called the atoms. Okay? But if you tune the system in such a way that this atom uh, exchange some non-trivial amount of interaction, then uh, if you prepare the, the same, prepare the, the system in the same initial con condition, but in this case, the system evolved into the, the Boltzmann type uh, equilibrium distribution. So this uh, two famous uh, um, experiment shows that we have, now we uh, achieve such a, a experiment technique to, uh, to observe the quantum dynamics of many body system. And then sometimes you, you observe uh, thermalization, but sometimes you do not observe thermalization. So we need to understand why or how the, the system thermalize or not thermalize. Okay? So uh, a little bit formal definition of quantum thermalization. So I have some isolated quantum system, which evolves in time according to this, following this uh, Schrodinger equation. Okay. So quantum dynamics means if you prepare your system in, in a definite uh, wave function, then it evolves according to this uh, Schrodinger equation to this state. Of course, uh, this is given by this uh, unitary uh, time evolution, okay? On the other end, uh, everybody expect that if the system is uh, non-trivial in, uh, enough, then the system eventually evolves into the thermal equilibrium state. And the thermal equilibrium state is represented by this uh, density matrix uh, the, given by this uh, microcanonical ensemble or canonical ensemble, okay? Then the question is that, suppose you, you prepare your system in, in, in this, uh, Definite quantum states represented by this wave function psi t. Okay, then, then you you can measure the some you can uh, calculate or measure the expectation value of some local observable O. Okay, of course this should be the time. Uh, the, this should be a, a function of time. Okay, then now you wait long enough. Okay, then then the question is that whether this expectation value should approach or converge to this uh, equilibrium, this uh, expectation value predicted by this equilibrium statistical mechanics ensemble average. Okay? This is the, uh, the essence of this quantum thermalization. So we should check whether this happens or not. Also, you know, you know to have this quantum thermalization, then one should, this, uh, this convergence should happen for any kind of initial state. Okay, so that means if if your system starting from the energy eigen state, suppose that you start your system in the energy eigen state, and then you achieve this thermalization. Okay, then that means you can achieve this kind of thermalization for uh, arbitrary initial state. Okay, so actually. Uh, more than 20 years ago, Stradlinski uh, proposed some kind of ansatz that guarantees the thermalization even if you start from the energy eigen state. Okay, <laughs> so this is a very uh, this at first sight it looks very complicated. So uh, this is an ansatz for some matrix element of local I observables in the Hamiltonian <laughs> eigen state basis. Okay, so if you uh, Calculate this expectation value of operator O with respect to a gamma state eigenstate gamma and eigenstate alpha. Then the region the, that must depends on uh, this quantum number gamma and alpha, and also some energy eigenvalue. Okay, e, e gamma alpha is the mean value of these two energy eigenvalue, and omega is the uh, the difference of uh, energy eigenvalues. Okay, and the each so-called ETH claims that this uh, of the matrix element should be written in this form in order to have achieved this quantum so-called quantum thermalization. Okay, so this form is very specific. For example, uh, this is a, this is about a diagonal component. Okay, so I have a chronicle data here. So this claims that the matrix element of the diagonal element should depends only on the energy parameter, not the quantum number, okay? So 
this must be given by a certain function O. Oh, okay, there's one question. Uh, yeah, Jay, there is a question by Argadip. Mm -hmm. Argadip, maybe you can go ahead. Yeah, so my question is like, uh, in, in a previous slide, uh, you were talking about that uh, equivalence between that uh, trace over the density matrix uh, versus the uh, average over the state, right? Mm -hmm. so would, uh, can, can you go back to the previous slide once? Like, uh, so yeah. would, wouldn't this be obeyed if, uh, say, uh, the row equilibrium, the row and the psi, the row is like a pure state? In mm -hmm. that case, won't won't this uh, won't this equivalence always hold? So will that be a like thermalized state or because uh, the, no, no, thermalization, this, uh, in thermalization, uh, if I understand your question correctly, uh, this is a very specific form of density matrix given by this uh, uh, micro canon ensemble or okay. this canon ensemble. Okay, I see. So so the condition of thermalization is uh, so it's not that uh, both are when whenever both are equivalent uh, that's thermalized that that's not the condition. Yes, so, yes. So this is a quantum mechanical expectation from a definite uh, wave function, and this right. is the expectation from the theory statistical mechanics. Okay. 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 And when they are equal, you say it's thermalized, right? Yes. Okay. So. Uh, the first part is that the, the diagonal component, and the, the, the first uh, important point is that the diagonal element should depend only on the energy parameter, not the quantum number. And this is something about the, sec uh, the off diagonal component. And the, the essence of this form is that this off diagonal component should be uh, the, the overall amplitude of this uh, off diagonal component is exponentially small. Okay, so. Uh, why? Because it, it includes this ex exponentiated uh, uh, entropy. This entropy is nothing but the micro ensemble entropy. So uh, th this entropy is just given by this logarithm of the density of state. And this is an extensive quantity in, in the usual statistical mechanics. So uh, this means that means uh, this is an exponential small amplitude part, okay? And, and this is an overall amplitude, and this is some operator specific uh, component. And, and again, this function should also depends only on this energy parameter, not on the, the quantum number itself. Okay? And of course, uh, if you really calculate this kind of matrix element, then you should observe some uh, energy quantum number dependence. Okay? All such a dependence uh, is incorporated into this some um, additional term R here. And the, the point is that uh, the essence of this ETH is that this uh, I, uh, eigenstate fluctuation is uh, just given by this. Uh, so actually, this should obey some uh, definite random matrix ensemble uh, distribution. For example, uh, Gaussian orthogonal ensemble or Gaussian unitary ensemble, depending on the symmetry of your system. Okay. So it's very, uh, very restrictive uh, assumption for the matrix element. And actually this kind of unjust is coming from the random matrix theory. So, so in a simple word, this unjust means that uh, if you have, if you diagonalize your uh, Hamiltonian and this is the energy, uh, energy direction, then in each energy uh, window, you have some, so this is some so-called micro count. Uh, window and then the energy eigenstate in this window should be given by the random uh, met, uh, I mean the, should be should be statistically equivalent to the random matrix uh, energy uh, eigenstate ensemble. That's the that's the main uh, idea for the, for this one. This ANSAS ETH. Okay, and so there is a very nice review paper uh, by. So, and so then, so as I said before, this unjust guaranteed a thermalization. So let's look how it, how it, whether it really uh, guaranteed a thermalization or not. So first, let's think about the diagonal sure. component. Hmm? So yes. there, is a, there is a question. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, John Gart, uh, maybe you can unmute and ask. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, your hand. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I, sorry, uh, in the previous slide, uh, 
we have this R and you said it's uh, a random matrix elements. And yes. uh, maybe I missed it, but I'm, uh, I don't understand where the randomness is coming from in this picture. So actually, uh, I have a definite Hamiltonian. So actually, there is no randomness, OK, in principle, OK? So but uh, once you have some definite uh, uh, Hamiltonian, you can diagonalize the, the Hamiltonian, and then you can calculate this matrix element, OK? Mm -hmm. And then you can uh, investigate the distribution function, function of this uh, matrix element. Okay, you, you can you can draw this some histogram or whatever. Okay, yeah. then this claim means that if you uh, look at some statistical property of, of this orthogonal component, then you cannot distinguish the the distribution property from that of random matrix ensemble. Oh, so so if oh, you yeah. draw if you some draw, some draw dice, actually there is no randomness. It's a that it's the solution of Newtonian dynamics. Okay. But if you collect all this uh, uh, output of ex ex experiment, and then you can compare this ex uh, experimental output with uh, this uniform distribution or whatever. Okay. Oh, so this is the meaning of this random matrix example. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the answer for the diagonal element. So this is coming from this part. And of course, there you can also have contribution from this part here. So the ETH for the diagonal matrix element means that this expectation value is given by some function of energy uh, eigenvalue with some correction term, exponentially small correction terms. Okay. So people uh, tested this uh, and just form using some one dimensional spin chain or uh, one dimensional hard core boson system, I mean, numerically. And this shows some uh, numerical data uh, obtained by the, this group in 2014. Uh, so so I, I didn't uh, mention the detail of this, uh, the model system, but uh, they diagonalized the Hamiltonian and then they measure the diagonal component of this specific operator, okay? And then plot this diagonal element as a function of uh, energy density here by changing the system size, okay? Then as, as you can see that uh, they tend to align along some, some line, okay? This line should correspond to uh, this uh, function of energy, okay? And then in addition to that, you, you can see some fluctuation around uh, this, this line, okay? And actually this uh, fluctuation is coming from this second part, okay? And as you increase the system size from 18 to 12, 22, this fluctuation, the width is just is, is decreasing. And as actually this decreasing, uh, I mean, actually this, you can check that this is an, in the, this exponential uh, decrease according to this, uh, this part, okay? So this is uh, some numerical demonstration of the ETH for the diagonal element. And then uh, this is my, my own data. So then now you have this, uh, some, some definite your data and then you, you you pick some numerical data with, within some uh, energy window, okay? And there are many uh, expectation values. Then you can draw the histogram, okay? And this shows the histogram. So from a small system and larger and larger system size, okay? And then you can see that it has, it, it follows some uh, this Gaussian distribution and the, the, the variance of the or standard deviation of this uh, Gaussian distribution is uh, decreasing with the system side exponentially, okay? So, so the, the, this, there are many, uh, other, also there are many uh, numerical tests for this diagonal element and all the diagonal uh, tests uh, are consistent with this ETH, as long as your system uh, exhibit, exhibit the quantum thermals. Okay, there is one question from Dominic. Uh, please, can you turn on your mic? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I still wonder about the X and Y axis. So what's B1, is that the dimension? And what's on Y axis? Because you say it's histogram, so 
what, what uh, is it? From this plant or that plant? Oh, those, yeah, this plant. But it is here. Yeah. So, so a D means a diagonal component. D means a diagonal component of certain uh, operator, operator number one and operator number two. So I, I mean, but the, the, I there are many components, right? So this is just one of them, or? So sorry, there are many. There are many diagonal elements, so this is just yes, one of them. Yes, there are many many diagonal elements. For example, within the in this uh, energy window, you there are many diagonal elements. So I draw the the, the histogram of those uh, element. Okay, some element takes the value of, uh, for example, zero minus zero point two. Some element takes the value of minus zero point fifteen, and so on. And then I can draw this uh, histogram. Okay. And this his data distribution is given by the Gaussian. Okay. And what does it tell us? I mean, how, how what, what does it mean? What should I see what in this? It means that, uh, the, uh, so this is the answers for the orthogonal, uh, I mean, diagonal element, ETH answers. This answers means that the diagonal element is depends only on the energy parameter with some fluctuation. And this fluctuation is given by the, the, the should follow the Gaussian distribution. Who's, ah, okay. Okay, so, they, they, so this is a direct test of this uh, answers. Uh -huh. so, so this is your data, right? But do you have the prediction there as, as well? Or? This is the data. This is data and this is the prediction. The prediction yep. means that the shape of distribution function should be Gaussian, okay? And the width of distribution should exponentially decrease. That's the prediction of ETH. Right, but you didn't you didn't plot the curve that depends on the entropy, right? Because you don't I don't see anything. Okay, so this is the entropy, and entropy is nothing but the density of state. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. here the D is the density of, density of state. Okay, so oh, here. Okay. I plot the, the, the variance of this distribution and, and the, the density of state changing the system size. And they, they, I mean, they converge to, uh, I mean, for example, for different system size, they have the same value, means that, uh, that this is a direct check of this, this factor. Okay, I see, thanks. And there is another question from, Jujia? Uh, so just a simple question here. Mm -hmm. So you took the entropy as a micro canonical one mm -hmm. and uh, how sensitive are these results to the definition of your entropy? Uh, so once everything is well fitted to the micro canonical ensemble, then using this, uh, uh, so everything is well fitted to the micro canonical ensemble, then the system is thermalized, okay? Then once you have a thermal system, then you can use this uh, ensemble equivalence, okay? Then you can uh, translate every result from the micro canonical ensemble to the canonical ensemble. So actually, yeah. So here, by definition here, this is the micro canonical ensemble, but if you take the Alexander transformation, then you can always, uh, transform this to the chemical ensemble uh, entropy as a function of temperature. So here, here uh, uh, it, it, it's good to I mean, stick to the micro chemical ensemble because everything is clear. I see, thank you. I thought there was another and raise yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't see. Oh, da, Dario has a question. Yes, Dario, go ahead. Yeah, probably related to Juzar comment. Can we say that when we move from, let's say, micro canonical to canonical, effectively what you are doing is a redefinition of the splitting between the exponential and the F O E alpha O, because essentially, I mean, here you are splitting. I mean, you have the random matrix part, which is R alpha alpha O. And then you have a split in between a function and the exponential of the entropy. If you change the definition of the entropy, effectively you are redefining what is your smooth function. 
Mm. Am I right? Uh, you can think in that way, but uh, here, uh, conceptually, uh, we, we are focusing on the isolated quantum system. So it, I think it's better to stick to the microchemical example. So I, for, first of all, uh, I mean, it's easy to take everything in, in terms of microchemical example. Okay. Uh, Yes. Uh, okay. Then, then uh, for the moment, I, I proceed and then uh, back to this issue, issue later. Okay, during the discussion. Okay. So, so I, I I showed you that the the uh, the diagonal ETH and then. And then Okay, then, then let's move to the off-diagonal elements, okay? So this is the answer for the off-diagonal element. Hmm? Ah, sorry, I, I forgot to mention one, one important thing, okay? So suppose we establish uh, this uh, answer for the diagonal element, okay? Then what does, uh, what's the meaning of this answer, okay? So this is exponentially small, so we, we can ignore this part in the thumb line limit, then, the remaining term is uh, not only this part. And as you can see, this only depends on the energy parameter, not on the energy quantum number, okay? This means that, so if you consider a microcanonical energy shell, then for every energy state within this microcanonical energy shell, their expectation value is equal to each other, okay? That means, individual expectation value should be equal to the microcanonical ensemble average because every every element should have the same value okay so this form guarantees the the, the guarantees the, the, this uh, i mean convergence of, of, of the exp expectation value to the, the microcanonical ensemble average okay Okay, then uh, let's move to the off diagonal element. Off diagonal element looks like this one. I, I do not have this uh, uh, dominant uh, diagonal component, but this I only have this fluctuating part. So actually, this part, this form has also been uh, uh, tested for many years. For example, uh, here they they also choose some XXG chain or some uh, spin chain or uh, hardcore boson si bosonic system and bring some observable here that they represent A or B. Okay, I do not show the explicit form of this operator here, but so they they measure the, this of the element and. So uh, uh, this is kind of a scatter plot of this uh, uh, off-diagonal element. Okay, so so off-diagonal element involves two index energy alpha and beta. Okay, so they focus on some energy space where e alpha plus e beta is equal to zero, so, for example. Okay, and then they change this omega. Omega means the difference of energy eigen eigen value. Okay. And then, as you can see, they are, they are very broadly distributed. And actually, this broad distribution is nothing but coming from this uh, random matrix part. Okay, and you can also uh, measure the distribution function of this uh, uh, matrix element. So this is the data of mine. So I focus on some uh, some part of energy space, and then calculate all the of diagonal component and then uh, measure the, the histogram, construct the histogram of off diagonal element from small system size to large system size. Okay, as you can see, uh, they actually the, uh, this line is the numerical data and this symbol is is the, the Gaussian fitting. Uh, so we, we can see this perfect match here. Okay, so. Uh, this uh, numerical test confirm this uh, Gaussian nature of this uh, fluctuating part. And also you can measure this uh, standard deviation of variance. And this standard deviation is also, uh, I mean the variance of this distribution is in, it's shown to uh, 
inversely proportional to the density of state. I mean, the, 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 so this confirms this uh, exponential part, okay? And so uh, this is kind of a numerical study to confirm the ETH. And so a brief summary. So now many people believe that ETH is valid for some uh, generic many body quantum system, which guarantees the quantum thermology. This is kind of a uh, main mechanism for the quantum thermalization of isolated quantum system. But of course, there are many uh, exceptional cases, for example, integral system. Integral system is something similar to the harmonic oscillator system. The, the first experiment the system I showed you, okay? That system do not uh, thermalize, okay? If the dynamics is too simple, for example, if your, if your system is non-interactive, there, then there is no reason to expect uh, thermalization. Of when it is isolated, okay? Even if you have some amount of interaction, still system can be uh, integral. Integral means you have a macroscopic amount of conservation law. Uh, this conservation law prevents your system from uh, approaching a thermal equilibrium state, okay? So these are the ex exceptional case. And if your system have a strong enough uh, disorder, then your system may fall into the localized phase. Then, and this local localization prevent uh, this uh, thermalization too. And there are some uh, exceptional cases that, that do not belong to integrable or many body localization scenario, but still there are some exceptional uh, 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 system which are known to uh, violate this ETH that does not follow the ETH prediction, okay? And these are uh, tested uh, many, in many, many different numerical uh, systems. And nowadays, uh, this uh, prediction is, is being tested uh, exper experimentally using the ultra cold atom systems, okay? using quantum simulator setups. Okay, so, from this EKG, you can uh, understand why you, I mean, why this expect, uh, quantum mechanical expectation value is equal to the, the microcanonical ensemble average. But this is uh, just only a uh, only single uh, aspect of thermal equilibrium. I, mean, I call this just a static aspect of thermal equilibrium. Okay. But if you say something about the thermal equilibrium, then we should have another in, in, ingredient, I mean, the dynamic ingredient. This is the, the fluctuation dissipation theory. In the classical language, we can say that in some detailed balance or something like that, okay? The fluctuation dissipation theorem means that, suppose you have a quantum mechanical system, and then if you apply some uh, perturbation, then you, you may have some uh, response in the quantity of some quantity B, I mean, some quantity represented by another operator B, okay? And this response is uh, usually uh, described by this uh, linear response function. And this FTT is kind of formal uh, relationship between this response function and the correlation function, okay? Two-time correlation function. And as you can see that this is a two-time property. So this uh, FTT is related to the off-diagonal element of the matrix observable, okay? So this is for, from the diagonal element, but this is from the off-diagonal element. So actually, uh, so this is the formal uh, setup for the FTT. So suppose if your system is in the true uh, thermal equilibrium described by this uh, Boltzmann distribution, okay, Gibbs distribution, then you, you can uh, have some formal expression for this uh, correlation function. But uh, because of some similarity of this time evolution function and this uh, Gibbs distribution, this uh, correlation function SAB can be related to the another correlation function SBA, okay, with some imaginary time. And if you perform the, the Fourier transformation, then this relation is translated into the, the spectral function of SAB and SBA. 
and SAB of omega is equal to the SBA of minus omega with some extra factor, okay? So uh, this, this kind of symmetry relation is uh, imposed by this uh, Gibbs distribution. And this uh, symmetry relation is called the kubo martin schrodinger condition. Uh, sorry, there is a people here. I'm terribly sorry for that. Okay. And now then what about the, the, the response function? I mean, the, actually, the, the, if you apply the linear response theory, then you can have some kind of formal uh, representation of this uh, uh, response function, okay? So actually uh, using this linear response theory, then you, you can uh, establish this, uh, the formal relation between response function and this correlation function. And also if you apply this uh, equilibrium condition, then you, you end up with this uh, famous uh, uh, fluctuation dissipation theory okay, for quantum system. So it's, it's easy to work in this symmetrized form of, of correlation function, then this correlation function is uh, proportional to the uh, response function with some, some factor here, okay? It looks very uh, strange, but if you take uh, H, a plan constant H bar, uh, goes to zero limit, then you recover this uh, some uh, familiar form. Uh, this is nothing but the, the classical version of the uh, fluctuation dissipation theory. And if you take omega goes to zero limit, then you, you end up with some familiar FDT for the classical system. The, the susceptibility is just given by the, 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 the fluctuations, okay? Okay, so actually all this, the, this fluctuation uh, dissipation theorem is based on this uh, kubo martin schrodinger condition. So, so now uh, then let's ask the question whether the isolate quantum system can, I mean, really uh, obey this uh, fluctuation dissipation theorem. Oh, okay, so there's a question. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, Dominic has a question. Dominic, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, could you could you say what does this mean like in physical terms? Because I can see some math, but I have no clue what does it mean? What could I imagine behind that? Uh, the fluctuation uh, dissipation theorem. So you mean this, uh, the meaning of FTT? Uh, FDT? Well, what are these terms there? What, what do they mean physically? That's what I wonder. So, uh, so uh, FTT means that if you apply some perturbation, then you expect some uh, response from the system, okay? Then that response is uh, represented with uh, this response function, okay? So, and then the FTT is a formal relationship between this response function and the correlation function, okay? So actually this, these, these two are some kind of independent uh, quantity. Response is uh, you, you perturb your system and what is the output of this perturbation? That, that, that's the response function. But correlation function is just, if you take, if you give me any two quantity, and then I just can com uh, com uh, compare, uh, calculate the correlation function, okay? Then mm -hmm. FDT means that the response is somehow proportional to some combination of this correlation function. That, that's the essence of the uh, uh, FTT. And in the classical system, if your dynamics obey the detailed balance, then this, uh, uh, I mean, we, we have some kind of magical, uh, this kind of proportionality of this uh, co uh, correlation and uh, response function. Okay. This, uh, the, direct uh, consequence of detailed balance in classical system. And for quantum system, uh, the, the relation looks a little bit complicated, but, the, the, but the, the, essence, the essential meaning is the same, the, the correlation function and the response is proportional. So if, you're, if, you're, if you have some very uh, highly correlated system, then it has some sensitivity 
more sensitive to the perturbation. That's the message of FTT. And this double dash, uh, that's the second derivative? Uh, it's kind of, no, no, no. It's, it's kind of the notation. Uh, it's, it's kind of, actually, um, uh, this is double, that means the imaginary part of some generalized response function, but uh, just forget it. Forget about that. Uh, just just okay. a response function. Um, All right, thanks. Just to just to mention, you have roughly fifteen minutes to wrap up the talk. Okay. So I have a quick question. So, how mm. do you define the response function? Uh, response function. Okay. So, mm, so in the unperturbed system, you have a time evolution of expectation of p. Okay, mm -hmm. and then if you apply the perturbation of a then you have some modified uh, time evolution of P, okay? Then the response function is defined as the, the difference of, of uh, I mean, the response in B, the change of B with respect to this A, the, the functional uh, derivative of B with respect to A. Okay, because I always find a bit confusing that because you you call it kind of uh, fluctuations, so but oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this difference uh, of averages. So I, I always so uh, in the classical standard, uh, some sometimes we call it dissipation and sometimes we call it fluctuation. I think it's it depends on the context. Okay. So in this context, the response is the correct. Okay. Okay. And Dario? Yeah, somehow related. I mean, here the expectation values are taken over the thermal state. Here. Uh, here. Uh, ah, okay, yeah. Here you are taking the expectation value over the thermal state. Yes, um, yes. But so you are already assuming that ETH hold, and so thermal, let's say, let's say okay. energy state behaves like a thermal state. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is the review of uh, fluctuation dissipation. Ah, okay. If okay, you are in, okay. already in the thermal state, and it automatically guarantees this FTT. Okay. But our Got question it. is that if you start from the energy eigenstate, then still we have the FTT or not. That's the, that's the I see. Okay. Got it. Actually, there are some previous work. Uh, I, uh, I just skip this. And OK, then now you, I, I am in the energy eigenstate. OK. And then I assume the ETH. Then can I expect the ETH and the FDT out of this ETH? Uh, ETH, that's the main, main question. So this is uh, the formal expression for the, uh, the, the structure from, I mean, the, the correlation function in the omega space, okay? And as you can see, uh, it involves this uh, off diagonal component, okay? Then the strategy is to take this ETH ansatz into this form. Okay, then, okay, so there are some figure, but I, I, I just skip this. Then we should answer to this question. So the expression using the ETH, does it satisfy this uh, kruger martin schubinger condition or not? Okay, so this is, this is for the definite uh, energy against it, not, uh, not the average over the canonical ensemble, canonical ensemble, okay? So we should check this, okay? Then how, how, how to check this one? This, check, this uh, relation can be checked using some indicator form. I call this indicator function GAB. You take the ratio of these two uh, correlation functions and take the logarithm and divide this, uh, this quantity with uh, H bar omega, okay? Then if, you, if your system satisfies this FDT, then this quantity should independent of omega. It should, it should be some constant. And also this constant should be equal to the temp inverse temperature, okay? So my strategy is that using the ETH, I, I will evaluate this expression. And then I, I will construct this indicator function and, in the, uh, and then uh, investigate whether this is really, Convert to some constant value, I mean, inverse temperature. Okay, 
So uh, actually, there are many uh, some long uh, algebra, but I just uh, skip all this algebra and I just show you the, my, my main result. Okay, by assuming ETH, I obtain this result. This indicate function, indicator function is equal to some constant. Basically, so this is the inverse temperature plus some uh, correction term. This correction term means that uh, in, in a strict sense, it, this does not uh, obey the FDT. But this correction, this is the expression for the correction term. And but as you can see here, this correction term is the, the derivative with respect to some uh, some um, macroscopic uh, quantity of some uh, uh, intensive quantity. That means this correction term is proportional to, inversely proportional to the system size. Okay, so in that sense, this, cor this correction term is just a final size correction. So in the thermodynamic limit, it should vanish. That means in the thermodynamic li limit, we expect the FDT even in the energy eigenstate. So I checked uh, this uh, finite size correction form with explicitly with, with this uh, spin half XXG chain, okay? Spin half XXG chain is a one dimensional system and I, 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 I'm considering this kind of XXG uh, interaction. So delta is, is a, an isotropic parameter of the system. And uh, I can think this uh, nearest neighbor interaction, okay? This is represented by here. And then I can also add next and nearest neighbor interaction here with amplitude lambda. And it is, it is known that without this uh, next nearest neighbor interaction, the, the nearest neighbor interaction Hamiltonian is uh, bad than that to solvable, okay? So this is, does not, this does not obey the ETH and this system do not thermalize. But if you introduce this lambda, then this system thermal is known to thermalize, okay? So from this uh, Hamiltonian, I diagonalize the Hamiltonian and um, I construct um, matrix element of various uh, observable and then evaluate this uh, correlation function and also this indicator function. Okay, so this is a numerical data of the, of the indicator function. Okay, so this line uh, is the numerical data. And as you can see, uh, they depends on omega. Okay, you can see some, uh, some up and down behavior. And this dashed line is the expectation from the thermalization uh, scenario. Okay, so it is deviated from this, uh, this value and also there is some fluctuation. But what we found is that actually this uh, deviation and this fluctuation is really, is perfectly described by, uh, I, by our, this uh, finite side correction term, okay? So what that means, so you, you can see a symbol here, this blue symbol, okay? Blue symbol means the, the our prediction, based on our finite size scaling theory, okay? And this prediction is, is almost indistinguishable with this numerical data represented by a line, okay? So we, we expect that all this uh, fluctuation vanishes eventually in the thermodynamic limit, I mean, the, the, large, uh, the long spin chain limit, okay? And we checked uh, this behavior for five different observables, for example, here, uh, for example, the um, nearest neighbor interaction and zero momentum distribution. And also uh, we, we consider five different observables in total. And in every case, we, uh, we observe the, the we, we checked our finite size scaling theory really uh, consistent with the numerical data, okay? So uh, actually, uh, I have on, uh, some other part for the eigenstate to eigenstate uh, the fluctuations, but I think the time is up. So, um, so just, uh, okay, so uh, I, I just show you 
the meaning, uh, explain just the meaning of eigenstate to eigenstate fluctuate. Okay. So uh, in the first part, I, I wrote down some formal expression of the eigenstate uh, thermalization hypothesis. And this hypothesis involves some, uh, some matrix element that should uh, follow the uh, random matrix statistics. Okay. So people, uh, so in order to check this random matrix behavior, people usually uh, diagonalize the Hamiltonian and construct the matrix element. So this is the energy axis and this is another energy axis. So, so each point, oops, each point means some, uh, some uh, off diagonal matrix element, okay? So people uh, usually consider this some, some small block or some, some massive block and uh, take all the uh, off diagonal element within this block and then construct a histogram and compare this histogram with uh, the Gaussian distribution or other distribution, theoretical predictions, okay? But uh, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, not every model obey the ETH. There are some exception, okay? For example, the integral of the system. Integral of the system do not uh, uh, follow the ETH prediction, but nevertheless, uh, we can, uh, I mean, investigate the statistical property of off diagonal element, even for the integral of the system, okay? Within this block, okay? Within, so this is uh, this is the, the numerical result. Okay, for the uh, thermalized system, we have a nice Gaussian distribution. Okay, but in the integral system, that uh, uh, I mean non-thermal integral system, they, they deviate from the Gaussian distribution. So, uh, there is no theory for the shape of this distribution, but numerically my data fit well to the uh, stretched exponential distribution. Okay, but still uh, the distribution is non-Gaussian, but the, the variance of this distribution is still inversely proportional to the, the, the density of state, okay? So some part, uh, th this property shares with the, the thermal system, but this property do not share with the integral, uh, I mean, the thermal system. But the point is that the, uh, when I derive our FDT using the ETH, and that's the, the main ingredient is, is, the, is the, this variance, not the distribution shape. Okay, so, so here is the, some, some puzzle because uh, we know that the uh, integral system do not uh, obey the, the uh, the fluctuation dissipation theorem, but still the, the variance is inverse, inversely proportional to the density of state. So it's kind of a puzzle in regard to the, uh, the fluctuation dissipation issue. So the, the, our, my, my idea is that uh, if you consider, if you look at the statistical property of element within this block, then you have some well-defined uh, variance, even for integral system, but in the non-integral system. But if you look at the columnar distribution, the, the variance of each columnar element, okay, then we have some self-averaging behavior in the thermal system. But in the integral system, which is not thermal, we do not have the, the, the self-averaging property. Okay, so that, that's the... Uh, such a property I, I, I named eigenstate to eigenstate fluctuation. So that prevent the integral system from uh, satisfying the fluctuation dissipation theory. That's, that's the main uh, message of the second part. Okay, so uh, this is the summary. And uh, if, uh, this picture was taken in two, uh, two years ago. Uh, 2019. Okay, I, I had I organized a workshop in Jesu Island, and actually my the, this this was initiated in this uh, excursion. Okay, so it is, it's me, and this is uh, Takayo Sagawa of the University of Tokyo, and this is a junior year, and uh, the course of my PRN papers. And 
So that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jay, for this exciting talk. Uh, so we are almost out of time, uh, but maybe we can take one question. We already had quite a few questions during the talk. So maybe one question. Uh, and in the meantime, Gabriel, you can set up uh, for the next talk. Maybe can I ask what you uh, mean by integrable quantum system precisely? I mean, every quantum sy system has with the, the eigenprojectors belonging to the Hamiltonian uh, yeah. enough uh, conserved quantity. So that cannot be the condition. Yes, okay. So uh, unfortunately I do not have uh, some formal precise definition of uh, uh, integrable system. But actually this ETH is, uh, is talking about some local observable. The eigenstate project you mentioned is, is a really global uh, quantity. So such a global quantity, uh, we cannot say anything. See here, okay. So then actually this is not, the real answer to your question. So actually, I, I do not have uh, uh, some precise definition of integrability. So formally, I can say that if you have some infinite number of uh, conserved quantity, then the system is said to be integral. And there are some indicator of integrability, but uh, I'm not sure whether that can, such an indicator or signature can be regarded as a definition of the integrability. So in some sense, it's kind of operational uh, uh, definition. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay, maybe I can ask one one last question. Um, so, uh, is it okay if I say, for example, if ETH holds, uh, then it immediately implies um, if DT will hold, or the reverse statement? Can I make that? Yes, ETH implies uh, FDT. FDT. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, okay, Mahbub has raised his hand. So quickly, maybe one minute. One more minute. I have uh, only uh, one query here that uh, uh, you were always uh, talking about the thermalization. So the results from this uh, ETH and the uh, mean field uh, dynamics is uh, equal or not? ETH and mean field? Yeah, if uh, I'm uh, if I do all those uh, harmonization uh, and get the result, and I'm doing the against it uh, harmonization hypothesis and do all the same calculations again and again. So at the end of the day, uh, when uh, actually I'm just trying to uh, evolve a system uh, for a long time in uh, using ETA and uh, doing the uh, uh, mean field dynamics. So. Is there any possibility that uh, the outcome from those uh, two sections uh, is equal? Uh, I don't think so because mean field and ETH is a totally different issue, I, I mm -hmm. think. So ETH means that, uh, can I say, so you, you have a depth, some a very nice quantum system. ETH means that at the end of the day, your, your all calculation reduces to the prediction of equilibrium uh, statistical mechanics, okay? Mm -hmm. Some system is strongly correlated, some systems in mean field like this, this is uh, totally another issue, okay? So StatMac can be applied to the, the strongly correlated system and all mean field like system, okay? So okay. it is okay, uh, to the mean field. Okay, all right then. So we should all uh, thank uh, once again to Jay. Uh, Jay, thank, thank you, you very much for this wonderful talk. Yeah, so uh, we should now move to our next speaker.